Uh, hi, I'm Stan, and welcome to my uh, bus tour. This is my 1964 Volkswagen bus uh, with a camper conversion. And normally, my videos involve restoring a very rusty uh, 1954 barn door bus, uh, but I had some requests to show this one off, so I decided to do this video. Um, so on this video, I want to cover uh, the chassis, uh, how we pack everything into it, and the conversion, and then set it up uh, like we're camping. So this chassis, this model would have been called a combi. Uh, combis had three windows on each side, and from the factory, they would have been just gray primer in the back uh, with a couple of removable bench seats. And they're considered a commercial chassis. And the commercial chassis were almost always single color. Uh, some were special ordered in two-tone, or you can get them in gray uh, primer and then paint them yourself. So I've owned this bus for over 30 years. Uh, but it wasn't until 2016 when I decided to restore it. Uh, I restored it back to its original condition. Um, in fact, it would have looked just like this coming out of the factory, except the hubcaps would have been gray paint instead of chrome. Uh, that could have been a dealer installed option, so I'll consider that original. So it still has its uh, drum brakes all around. Uh, they're not power. The steering is manual. The top speed of this, I think, is published as 101 kilometers an hour. Um, it starts to feel quite unsafe at that speed in a stock configuration. Uh, so this is the driver's compartment. Uh, it's actually fairly comfortable. There's lots of room. Um, it's not crowded or anything, even though it is a quite a small area. Uh, the seats are fairly comfortable. Uh, the suspension on the on the bus is quite stiff, uh, so actually these seats make up for your suspensions. So they're springy, so when you hit big bumps, it just kind of takes it up in that. Nice big steering wheel, because uh, you have manual steering, you need a big steering wheel. Uh, so for gauges, we have a speedometer. Um, I got. Uh, 15,000 uh, 15, miles since I restored it. Uh, and then there's a couple lights on it. So there's a uh, an oil pressure light and a generator light. Uh, it's actually important to pay attention to the generator light because if that comes on, it can sometimes mean the belt is flown off the uh, generator, which also runs the cooling fan for the engine. So it'll cook the engine. Uh, has a fuel gauge. Uh, earlier models did not have a fuel gauge. Uh, this one does. Earlier ones had a reserve, uh, so when you started to run out of gas, you pull the reserve, but realize it was already been pulled and run out of gas anyway. Uh, this one has hazard lights, so all my four-way flashers. Uh, headlights, so it's park and headlights, and the dimmer is on the floor, like most old vehicles. And there's wipers. Single speed, very slow. They go much faster when the, uh, when the windshield is wet and the engine's running. Though they don't really wipe the water off. They just kind of smear it around. And they're, they're terrible. I refuse to put modern wipers on it, though. Uh, it has a emergency brake, park brake. And it uh, works really well. A shifter. I have a shifter extension on. Uh, having the knob down here, is, you have to kind of lean forward for your uh, first and third. So I like the extension. I can relax in my seat and I can just uh, go through the gears. Nice parcel shelf, you can throw your stuff in. Uh, I've also added a US, or a 12 volt outlet uh, with a double USB plugged into it. So we can charge our phones and stuff. And I have a suction cup phone mount, so for the GPS. Uh, also I've added, uh, I made a, a cup holder, uh, just hooks in the dash. And it's, it's slotted so we can put mugs in it with handles, and so that works really well. And the ashtray, it's actually 3D printed. Uh, it's a vase, so you can fill it with water, uh, put flowers into it, and uh, so when we're traveling, we always have some flowers in the windshield. It's kind of nice. Yeah, I need to sand that down and paint it the same color as the dash. The original ashtray is supposed to be dove blue. Uh, what else is there? Oh, the heater. So there's a knob down here which you have to spin, and it opens flaps in the rear. And it allows air that's used to cool the engine to go over the exhaust, up a pipe underneath, and up this pipe in the center. And uh, currently it's set to 
air to come out the vents down by your feet. And if you flip this lever down, uh, the air comes out up here. Heater works actually beautifully in the summer, uh, but not when it's cold. So it's uh, not as useful as one would hope. Let's shut that back off. Let's see what else is there. Oh, uh, the windows are sliding and they have little notches so you can put them in different positions. Uh, I almost always drive with the window open a little bit. It makes less wind noise with it open. Uh, so these seats are, uh, this is a re reproduction seat covers that matches the original very closely. It's the color and texture and the beading. Um, this seat actually slides forward and back. Not very well. I'm not sure why you'd ever want it forward, but in, in the back rest tips forward to get behind. And this seat, the whole seat tips forward. Uh, and it's, hopefully you can see here, the spare tire so it's in behind the seat. Uh, and under here is like a toolbox. And that's what I use it for. I have my jack in there. I have a bunch of spare parts. I have an extra generator belt. I have a, a carburetor kit. I have a coil points, uh, a rear main seal, you know, and a bunch of tools, enough to pull the engine, tear it apart, and that sort of thing. Stuff you need to have in a vintage vehicle if you're traveling long distances. Oh, I should check. There's the ignition switch down here. Uh, and also the signal lights uh, are here. And Yes, they work without the key. So a lot of times I'll pull into a parking spot uh, with the blinker on, stop, shut it off, get out. And I come back to the, I see the, the light still flashing away. <laughs> so this vent up here is a great thing. So there's screens in front of the windshield. Uh, the air gets pushed up uh, through this duct. I have a flapper control on this side. I control the positions for how much air comes through. And then I have a controller here where I control if the air comes out the back towards the rear, or out these side vents. Uh, so I can flip that over to side vents. What's really nice on a hot day is this cool air, well, or air anyway, is blowing out of these vents onto your head. Uh, and it really makes a difference in keeping you cool on hot days. Uh, the other thing I've done is I've added two 12 volt fans in here that are controlled from the rear. So at night, I can have it uh, air directed out the back and when you're laying in bed, there's just this cool breeze coming back over the ceiling on top of you. And it makes a huge difference on hot nights. And so the other thing that makes this uh, quite nice on hot days is the vent windows. Uh, so when you open these up like this, you get this huge amount of air just pushed in to the front, so you get lots of wind. Um, you also get a few bees, but uh, I guess you have to put up with them. My latch is broke on this side. This is one of the one of the few new parts I had to buy for the inside, and of course it broke because, well, replacement parts are never as good as the originals. So I get a source of an original, and it's a pain to change. Everything has to come apart. So, uh, so these buses have the engine in the back, uh, like all the old Volkswagens. Uh, the uh, air is pulled in through the side to cool the engine. Oh, I guess I can uh, show off the engine here. Let's see. So this is a four-cylinder air-cooled, and it's a flat four, two cylinders out each side. In this configuration, it's around 50 horsepower. It's still single port. Uh, it does not have the correct carburetor on it. It's a slightly newer one, and it has an 09 distributor. Uh, but the 09 distributor actually works fairly well in the bus, where you just want smooth, low-end torque. And the single port works better in the bus, because it gives you that torque. Also, I upgraded to a 100 amp alternator instead of the old generator. And that's basically because of the camper conversion. Another upgrade I did to this engine was a doghouse cooler, which gets the oil cooler out of the airflow that normally cools the left side head. Uh, also added an oil filter. Originally, these engines didn't have oil filters. Uh, the oil pump has a cover on it that allows you to screw an oil filter on. Uh, so this is a, a small camper. So we normally use this uh, more as a tent uh, and live out here, outside. Uh, there is a table that folds up so that we can sit around the table inside if we want to. But normally we just leave the bed out and we live out here. So that means everything is, we try to keep everything accessible from the doorway. That's how this layout is. Um, 
So this cabinet, um, we have all our, our plates, uh, cooking utensils, glasses, bowls, uh, dishcloths, all that stuff sets in here. And there's sub drawers to keep everything organized. Um, this down here is our fridge. Uh, and this can be used with ice, but it also has a solid state cooler on it. And so it, it stays nice and cool, especially if we're traveling. So you're driving every day. This stays really cold, no ice at all. And because the plate on the bottom is a cooling plate, the bottom stays cool, the top not so much. So things like chicken and beer and stuff stay on the bottom, and then things like vegetables that uh, uh, can stay on the top. And there's a lot of space in that. There's plenty of room. We can get more stuff in there we need. Uh, condiments, spices, all set over here. Uh, our coffee stuff. Uh, we have a little little cubby spot here for things like lighters, sunblock, and things. Um, this is our basically our junk drawer. So in here, uh, you know, I have things like a butane, I have a hatchet, uh, garbage bags and stuff. Well, this is our our uh, recycling bag. Uh, we just stick over here on the side. It works really well. So under this seat, uh, we have our our five gallon, twenty liter uh, water tank with a quick connect hose. So when we need water, you just pull it out, fill it, and put it back in. Uh, we have a butane grill that's so there. We use that for cooking. But we use butane for everything as it's lighter. Um, it's cheaper, I think. And uh, even the equipment packs down better. So it's, it's cleaner than propane. And we have a little step uh, in here. Uh, we normally keep our extra uh, water and other things to drink in here. And we have some uh, a fold away bucket, uh, dish pan, that sort of thing sets into that area. Uh, back here, uh, the spare tire sets in behind here, so this kind of fills part of this area. So we just use this as kind of a junk area, extras. Uh, there's curtains for go around the front uh, windows that set in there. We have a 110 outlet, and that will power from a shore plug in the back uh, or I have an inverter that I can I could power that up to if I want to and up here there is a, a 12 volt outlet with a double USB there's also a another one down here yes another 12 volt outlet down there which I don't have anything in uh, so uh, over here uh, this is usually used for like uh, boxes of cereal uh, cookies chips that sort of thing uh, I keep the butane burner here. Uh, the plan was always to uh, make a stainless shield that was here that would fold out so we could actually use it here. But I don't. Th I think that's uh, we've never wanted to use it there, uh, so that's probably been a bit of a waste. Uh, there's another drawer just for storage. Have to have the coffee mug in there or coffee coffee pot in there at the moment. Uh, down here. Uh, this is where we keep the laundry, the dirty laundry. Uh, so actually, we actually have a, a laundry bag that we fill, and that sets in that area. So we also have this table here. It folds out. There's a leg on it. Uh, so this works, works well. If it's really rainy or something, we can uh, eat in here. Um, play cards, that sort of thing. So the this is our little collapsible garbage usually sits so there. Uh, so the this bench folds into a bed. Uh, right now we're keeping all of our the awning stuff underneath there, and our shoes over there. There is a 110 heater uh, behind there. It's like a 600 watts, runs off the shoreline. And uh, if we're camping in the cold, uh, if we camp at a, a campground with power, then that heats the inside this bus beautifully. I am restoring a original gas heater that goes in by the engine that will also blow air out of there. Uh, hopefully for next spring I'll have that finished. Uh, so this bench, you just grab it here and it pulls out. And these cushions go down. And that makes a bed. 
So this uh, is a double bed. Uh, what we did is we bought a, uh, a double a memory foam mattress and then cut it into three pieces. I did cut about an inch off of one side, uh, but the uh, probably wouldn't have had to because there is a little bit of space there. But it's very comfortable, and we don't really notice the seams in it. We have a uh, kind of a mattress topper that goes on, hooks around the corners, and then our, our sheets and everything go on it. Uh, I'll set that up in a bit, uh, but it's actually a very comfortable bed because it's a full double. It's lots of room. Oh, the curtains. Uh, so the curtains, we used a bungee cord top and bottom, and they just unhook. They hook on a little nub, uh, and they have snaps on, so you can uh, snap them together and then spread them out and snap them again. And it keeps them uh, nice and blocked off. And these will actually also snap uh, across, so you can snap the two together like that. Uh, so it gives us pretty good privacy. Uh, plus we have uh, ones that go across the front, magnets. Uh, maybe we'll put those in after uh, and show them off. Uh, so this bus came originally from factory with six pop-outs. Pop-outs mean uh, these windows have a latch that make them pop out. Uh, standard, they only have the two rear ones pop out, uh, but this had the uh, factory option for all six, which is nice. Back here, uh, the closet, this is where we keep our, uh, our clothes we want it hung up. Uh, so we have the co-hangers in here. That's quite a bit of storage in there, works quite well. Up here, uh, we have, uh, they usually refer to these as a headbanger cabinet. Uh, most of the Westy, West Valley ones, uh, they actually come out further and they're deeper down. This one, I moved it up and back, so we really don't hit our head on it, and it's rounded anyway. Also kept the front lip open because it's easier to pack our stuff in and access. Uh, so we have some blankets, towels, face cloths, uh, or, uh, mattress topper, some sheets over here. It makes it easy access. I also have a little storage here. That's where I usually keep my uh, ebook at night. <laughs> so this uh, this storage here, we normally will keep vegetables in there like potatoes and stuff. We keep our breads in here. Uh, there's also a 12 volt outlet. Uh, a USB plugged into it so that at night we can set our phones here and keep them plugged into charge. So in the back here, uh, when we're traveling, we keep our lawn chairs here, our pillows. Uh, this is our rear storage here. So some shelves. Uh, there's quite a bit of space in there for clothing. I also have a storage up here. Uh, because there's this wasted space uh, where the hinge springs are, we're using that for uh, storing things like uh, extension cord, uh, cables for the uh, solar cells and stuff. I actually want to do is build a little wire cage for here, keep things organized, make it easier to put stuff in and out. Uh, so in, under the mattress, I actually have two uh, of the flexible solar cells. And then also little stands uh, so you can prop them up to aim them at the sun uh, when you want to. Um, what we do is I, I have connections in by the engine uh, for the solar cells so I can plug them in uh, when we're out in the sun. Keep our battery charged up uh, for running the fridge and lights and stuff. Uh, there's also a little level I put in the back here, which I never use. I just use my cell phone for level but it's there if I want it.
So this is basically set up. Uh, with the two of us, uh, it usually takes us about 10 to 15 minutes. We drive into a, an area to give, be all set up and ready to relax. Uh, I guess normally I'd have my butane uh, grill and burner out and a few things, uh, but this is pretty much it. So the, the awning, the sides uh, continue out, and there's two front pieces that go on and zip down. And we can also peg the bottoms of it. Uh, so if an area there's going to be any wind, we'll peg those down. It, it makes a nice little room, uh, especially nice at night uh, for getting in and out of the bus. There's no room to stand up in this, uh, so being able to dress undress outside and then get in. And if it's uh, bad weather, raining a bit, this is a nice spot. Keeps everything protected. It is, uh, I have trouble keeping this waterproof. Uh, it works good in light rain, drizzle, the water runs off. It'll actually pool in a couple of low spots. But if it's a heavy rain, it kind of, the drops like mist right through. It's like the weave is too open. Uh, the awning, so I actually built the uh, the awning, the aluminum frame, and my wife uh, uh, did all the sewing. Uh, in fact, she did the sewing for the curtains, the quilt, the all the cushions, all that. So the, the awning is based on the Westvalia awning at the time. So the shape and dimensions are the same. Uh, but I wanted lightweight and I wanted the poles to be shorter so I could pack them together. Uh, the Westvalia ones are steel poles that are quite heavy and quite long, awkward. Uh, so that's all aluminum. Uh, it also clamps the drip rail instead of using pods that were bolted to the, the bus. Uh, everything about the design uh, I consider the, the weight of. Uh, in fact, the, the table and, and, and under these, in fact, all these panels, the back side has pockets all hollowed out so it's very thin. Uh, to cut the weight down. Even the floor panel in here, which is half inch Baltic birch, all under the cabinets where you can't step, has been hollowed out from the backside to, to lighten it. Uh, so the bus has a sound deadener and uh, insulation. And that's why it sounds like it's got body fill in it, but it's actually a sound deadener. The, I use kill mat, uh, their thinner uh, level one, because weight, again, was a big issue. And I only put small patches in the center of all the panels and a few around the roof uh, to keep the vibration down. I didn't cover everything. And then the insulation is a, a, a double layer of uh, bubble wrap, basically with the aluminum foil on each side. comes in a big roll. It's fairly inexpensive, very lightweight, and waterproof. Uh, and there's three layers uh, in all the walls and doors and ceiling. And that basically fills that gap solid. So this panel is direct against insulation, which is direct against the outside. It makes a huge difference. It stays quite comfortable, even in quite cool weather. The two of us sleeping in it, it stays quite comfortable inside. Uh, and also the sun hitting the, the bus doesn't heat it up. The first year uh, after it was restored, I didn't have any interior. I just had the bed and the mattress. Like mattress wasn't even cut, it was just laying in there. Uh, we took it on our first outing, and at night, uh, the all these interior, all this, the steel panels were all covered in water. And in the morning, as soon as the sun hit it, that all that water evaporated. It was like a sauna in there. It got very hot, very humid, very quick. <laughs> so the insulation makes a big difference. And there's also insulation under the floor panel and under the uh, panel over the engine. Uh, it's basically eighth inch thick of uh, high density foam with uh, aluminum foil on it. I think it's for uh, underlay for hardwood floors. I'm not sure, um, but it's just a little extra uh, to keep that heat in or out. So traveling one of these is, is a different experience from any modern camper. Uh, it's slow, so it means you have to stay away from the highways, uh, which means you get to see a lot of land that you'd never see before. In fact, when we first started traveling in this, even locally, we were going on roads that we haven't been on in years and years and years, because we always just take the highways. You want to get point A to point B, and you just take the big roads. Whereas this, we're taking all the, the smaller roads uh, through the little towns, villages that you just never see uh, to, with today's highways. 
it takes almost twice as long to get anywhere as it would with a, a modern RV. Uh, so I guess that's about it for this bus tour. I hope I covered everything. I hope I kept it interesting. <laughs>